And there we go. Good morning, everybody. We are now live streaming. Happy Tuesday, July. Nope. It's June 14th. I'm jumping the gun. We're talking about weather. We're talking about jumping in the pool. And my brain's going to 4th of July and kicking back by the pool and barbecuing and all that stuff. 4th of July is almost close to July 5th. uh, Oh, what does that even mean? I don't know. Um, What day is is that for? It's, I don't know, but today's the army's birthday. So happy birthday army and all of those who serve. All right. Today we're talking about stamps. It might not sound exciting, but it comes up a lot, right? We've had some support tickets come in in the past couple of weeks and we figured it's a good time to revisit some stamp stuff. And I learned something about stamps that we haven't talked about before. And it's so silly that I had to share it. So you learned something about stamps. I did. So I, I'm going to create probably one that isn't a stamp, but to kind of use a workaround as a stamp. But um, here's, here's what I learned. So I've shared this link a bunch of times and I'll share it again because it's free stuff that you can download from review and from Bluebeam on their website. And they have stamps that you can download, right? Tool sets. We've been through this, but stamps, There's your basic ones, and then there's these interactive ones. These contain some JavaScript magic um, going on with these, right? And we've looked at editing them before. But what I didn't realize is when you download these, it's going to download a zip file. Easy enough. You take the stamps, you put them in your stamp folder, and you're done. But it also contains something that most people don't even pay attention to including yourself, myself, look at this, instructions on how to use it. Not just how to use it, but how to do stuff with JavaScript. So here's that file, shows you how to import the stamp, fairly straightforward, talks about the JavaScript window, blah, blah, blah. But down here, pardon my scrolling, going a little quick, it starts talking about what this this stuff means, right? So um, it's, it's a good good way to, to break yourself in if you're looking at doing some JavaScript mm. editing because um, it does have a little bit of information. That's a lot of information. Yeah, but it's worth worth checking out. So on that note... Uh, but you have mean- to have extreme. So let me give you the caveat for that to modify. Okay. Yeah, well, you have to have extreme um, for... Um, JavaScript editing yes. currently. I'm laughing because you okay. got distracted late because you're because the cat's cat, out. Yeah. yeah. So, Michael, I don't want to talk about it, but I've got a plant that's not so healthy and it's over there and she has to jump over the not so healthy plant. And I just worry that one day it's just going to all fall apart. Well, but, if I could zoom in, I could see what's going on. Yeah. Well, let's for another day. Okay. Cats and squirrels and oh my, it's Tuesday. Um, so about that, Sheldon, um, Extreme gets all the fun for now. Yeah. So now. there may may have been a tease or, or two last week about what's coming up with Review Super Mega Ultra um, in less than, let's say less than a month certainly less than a month, the new version coming out. And um, it won't be as extreme as you might be used to. So there's that. Um, But I haven't checked to see. And Michael, if you want to check to see if JavaScript is where it lives in the hierarchy. Otherwise, yeah, let me go do that right now. We can start playing with some stamps. All right, so I've got my good old uh, demo set here, and uh, there's not a whole lot of room on this title block for some stamps, but guess what? We're going to make some room, not for distribution. Oh, no. Let's just make, let's just. Yeah, scripting is going to be in. The high tier, mid tier? The high tier. Okay. So it stays somewhat. uh, extreme so what's gonna be different is 
what we formerly know knew as standard will be PDF creation and editing, markup creation and tracking, customizing applications and tools, digital signatures and OCR, basic measurements, SharePoint and project wise integration. Okay. But stamps is for everybody still. Applying stamps today should be a standard CAD extreme everybody. Right. And you can access stamps a few different ways. Um, here in the review advanced profile, right here on your top toolbar, there is a stamp button, or you can type in S for stamp. If you type in S, it will not give you the drop down entirely. It will activate your dynamic uh, toolbar up here where you can go see which one it is. Hey, are we going to be messing with the blend mode today like we did last time? We really should because I don't remember it. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> well, we could do it right now. You don't have to modify them. So if you put an approved stamp down. All right. So a couple things about stamps. So when we go to our stamp, you can do things in two ways. And uh, this always comes up with... How do I make sure that my company like always puts in the logo at the same size, right? Um, so let's make a, a stamp real quick. I'll go up to tools. How'd you dock that stamps there? How did I dock this stamp? The stamp in your toolbar. Um, that I because I hit S, and that brought that there. So it was no, active in, in your toolbar. You have the stamp, yeah. This one, it's always uh, there in review advanced, yeah. I mm -hmm. think so. I must be blind. I'm going to create a new stamp. We're going to call this ATG logo. Oh, it is there. <laughs> Magical. We're not going to do a template. I'm going to skip blend mode for now. We're going to come back to this. We're going to make this uh, oh, two by one. And we'll call that good. So now I have my blank stamp. I'm going to go insert an image. Speaking of using things from my toolbar. Um, doo -doo -doo. of course I should probably figure out where I put things. Yoda. Right. It's actually not Yoda. That was, um, Grogu. Grogu. There's no spoiler warning at this point. You should have all seen Mandalorian. All right. So I'm going to save this. We'll call this good. This is the proper size at all times that I want this logo to come in at. This is why I can go to, um, when I go place my stamp or place my logo, I can ensure that I'm getting the same size every time, right? So if you're doing a title block, if you're doing, uh, you know, the stamps that we're doing, a uh, company logo, any sort of table, when we have that stamp saved, now I can go in to tools or stamps here. There's my ATG logo. When you get that stamp icon to place it, this is where things get different. If you left click and hold, you can drag it out and make your box and you're done, right? Well, guess what? I totally just picked a random area. That size is not what I intended, right? If I go back to stamp and go to my logo and I just left click once, it's going to drop it in at the size that I had intended. So yes, this would be the proper size of whatever I wanted it to be, but how you place it will determine whether or not it's gonna come in the right way. I'm saying that solely because I'm the one that keeps forgetting that. So I always end up uh, drawing the rectangle like, oh wait, I gotta go back. There is no reset size option, which would be pretty cool. Hmm. Like reset the scale. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Um, good question, David. Is there a way to lock it so it cannot be resized? You can lock it. Yep. Well, let's go lock my this one. So if I go down here to lock, now it's locked. This is a functionality we've never really played with. I don't remember ever, us ever playing with this. Right? So now it's locked. I can go... There's no unlock. You've got to kind of uncheck it and then you can move it around. Um, so uh, before you continue onward, mm -hmm. Mr. Artley, 
we might have new folks in here. So are they ever at any point allowed to ask us any questions? Not on topic? Well, of course. Of course. So yes, I do see some new names in the attendee list. Welcome, everybody. We kind of skipped our little intro because, <laughs> you know, this is what we do and it's early in the morning for for everybody. But I'm Jason. This is Michael. We're with ATG. And this is the Morning Coffee Review. This is a community gathered thing about all things Bluebeam. If you have questions about anything relating to Bluebeam, fire away. We're going to talk about stamps, but guess what? It's We can't talk an hour about stamps. We don't want to. We want all these questions. See, and David is being a fantastic example. In the chat, he's asking questions. Cool. Let's figure out if it works. We may not have all the answers, but by golly, we like to figure them out. Mm-hmm. So we like to go down rabbit holes. Yeah, yes, we do. So grab some coffee. Think of your questions. Fire away about anything. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, Ed's got a good comment here about what do we do if people are mixing page sizes? So 22 by 34 or and they have 11 by 17. What's going to happen to the logo? Right. Obviously, they're going to be sized differently. I would make it a scalable markup. A scalable markup? Yeah. So you can save stamps to your tool sets and the tool set can be scalable. Oh, now that's a sneaky trick. I wasn't even on my radar. So there we go. And in that case, we'd have some stamps for 11 by 17 and we'd have some stamps for 22 by 34. And those would be pre-configured. Yeah. So that would that would work really, really well. Or you could just have a stamp that says 11 by 24 or mm -hmm. the other. That would be the other one. You could do it either way. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of a big deal with uh, the new changes that are coming to review because Bluebeam Cloud is going to get really, really cool. Mm, I didn't think about that. That's, mm -hmm. that's when you would use your tool set, right? Because mm -hmm. tool sets are transferable. Mm -hmm. Yep. So my idea was probably the one that you'd want to use because it's scalable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you lock your stamps, does it lock the edible fields? Uh, yeah, it, it locks all your properties. So if you select it, the one that you locked, did you lock one? Well, let's, let's grow into one with properties, with more properties, right? Stamp, do, 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 do. Is it the shop drawing one? No. Mm, Submittal. Let's, let's grab this guy. Project MCR. So by the way, JavaScripting gets you this window. And right. what this window is doing is at entering your form fields in for you. Just a little background there. So about that, this is not locked. I can't change anything. Right? Um, even if I go to my properties, I really oh, modify. Can't. Oh, it's just. Oh, I guess that does work. Well, yeah. but that's modifying the stamp itself. Yeah. So, yeah, yep. so look at that to... uh, up here on the top. Jason, mm -hmm. you're not frozen. I'm here. You're there. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, Jill. Jill froze. Okay. I hope I didn't freeze. Um, so be careful with that. So let's go back and take a look at what happened there. I went here to this um, JavaScript stamp that I inserted. Again, this is the one from the website. I downloaded it. I edited it to put my company logo here. And then I dropped this in here. And now I've dropped it in. I'm trying to figure out how to go back because I didn't mean to put it in as a proof. Uh, I mean to put it in as revise. So how do I fix that? So I went to the properties, right? the gear icon here and um, I'm looking at things and there is no way to change um, to change those properties. Right? You can change I, the color though, but that's it. Yeah. I see the stamp here. I see all this stuff and I see modify. That what seems like add? A, no. that's going to create a new stamp. So what this is section here is doing, it's showing me the folder where these stamps live. Um, 
I'm going to come back to that. Remind me in 12 <laughs> seconds. Um, uh, here's where my stamps live. If I go to modify, look at what's going on up here. It takes me to the actual stamp, right? So I'm not modifying the one that's already inserted. This is not the solution I'm after, right? So we need to be careful there. Now about stamps and folders. Holy crap, I actually remember to go back to it. Um, in our stamp collection here, if we go down to the bottom, oh, it's not going to really show. And yeah, there we go. Down to the bottom, there's a change stamp folder. Hmm. By default, this is going to live on your C program data, uh, Bluebeam software, Bluebeam review, um, et cetera. This doesn't have to live here. This could totally be a server drive, right? Something on your company server that has your company stamps in it. And if everybody points to the same one, guess what? Everybody has access to the same collection of stamps. Mm. So this is a good way to standardize things at your firm by pointing to a collection of stamps on your server. So if you don't have one, or if that's something that uh, you have the power to do ethically and responsibly, create that little uh, folder on your server and share the link. And I you believe- can also, You can also path to it for your deployments. Yes. Yeah. So when uh, Review Super Ultra Mega comes out in a few weeks, when your IT folks are doing that deployment, they can say, oh, ignore the C drive for stamps, go here instead. I and, wonder uh, how it's going to work because you're logging in anywhere, the sing single sign-on. How does it know where those tool sets are? How is that going to work server-based? Um, maybe they just get synced to the cloud. Because yeah. Bluebeam Cloud is going to be a big part of review desktop. How and is that going to inflex then your deployments right because then your deployments aren't going to need to have all the preferences because all the individuals are going to have those or do you still need to have all those preferences because you load them into the instance of your user base and then you push them to the cloud we'll find out in a couple weeks yeah hmm. yeah lots of questions um, so david how does that work if you're off the grid the cloud makes everything magical hmm. connects all the things. It's just going to work. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, we'll ask all those questions I just asked to make right? sure everything's ironed out. We yeah. are chomping at the bit to get early access. So we want to we want to be helpful because I know that once it releases, as always, we're all going to be playing with it and going to have questions. So mm -hmm. we'll try to get ahead of it. Um, no, David, I forbid forbid <laughs> what you just said it's the most disgusting thing i've ever read here on mcr and i i'm gonna repeat it though okay here we go ready i want to uh, this is not me i would never ever say this i want to be able to work at the beach where there is no internet see you could no. use the uh what is it what's no i don't want to work internet the, what oh starlink starlink you could work from the beach with starlink yes um I may have been looking into that yesterday. Mm. Six hundred bucks. Work on the beach. I don't want to. I don't want to work. I don't know on the beach. I had no internet. I don't know. I'm again vacation brain. I'm so jealous of TJ CJ, even though she's taking time from her vacation to come join us today. Yeah, um, phone hotspot. Yeah, there's options. There's options. Probably. Once this coffee sinks in, I'll, I'll start thinking of ways to work um, on the beach with no internet. So question here from Sandy. New to creating stamps, I am trying to create a QA, QC drawing stamp with lots of signature lines. <laughs> I ended up using physical lines as I could not get signature lines to look uniform. Any tricks to share? Um, so if you're going to, I guess the question would be signature fields, but if you're just creating a line to where people are going to sign, you can use align tools, which Jason will show you here in a second for on, you can align to page, you can align in a group, 
We did this when we were creating custom markups. So if you ever need to realign things, I do this when I create dashboards. If you make any type of markup on the PDF, if you want multiple ones to align, you can grab them, right click and say align. Right. But we need to be very careful when we're thinking about doing signatures, multiple signatures on one page. Yep. Right. Because there's different um, securities and, and things going on with that. Um, and just clarify, David doesn't want to work from the beach. He wants to be able to work. Now, see, now that's totally different. That's totally different. And by able to work, you mean like play Angry Birds or check emails <laughs> or tune into MCR from the beach. That'd be fun. Yeah. We'll be on the beach with you soon. That's right. We should we should really get a countdown for next week. We're gonna mention how many days it will be until XCon. Um, until XCon. There we go. So yes, um, digital signatures throws a wrench into the works. Um, we played with this last week when we did signatures. Yeah. Um, sometimes it locks things. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't behave the way that we would like it to. But um, because be careful it's, it's certifying the document once it's being signed. So it locks specific things in it. And we found that out yesterday. Not the hard way. We just found it out because we didn't have a document that it really mattered towards. Correct. So, yeah, if we were going to go do this, eh, might as well. Signature block. What's that back button? What back button? You don't see that? This button? Yeah. That's my Grammarly. Oh, I need to get that. Anybody else use Grammarly? It's a kind of a lifesaver, but also kind of annoying sometimes. Um, it's, I'm getting a little bit too dependent on it. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I shouldn't get it. No, you, you, you might, you might appreciate it. Give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. It's free yeah. for now. I mean, there's like a, I think there's a paid tier, but the free one is awesome. It's a big green G. Um, so there we go. Um, we'll go signature block. We'll hit OK. Uh, I forgot to manipulate the sizes. That's OK. I can adjust it after the fact. Mm -hmm. So here I'll just go place a rectangle. Where's my buttons? See, I don't know. I messed everything up. I'm not, I'm not feeling red today, though. Nice 25 cent work, dude. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, that was my, I, I remember looking it up. Um, one of our other colleagues recommended it here and I didn't, I saw the cost and I was like, yeah, I'm good. No, the free one is all I have and it's really pretty awesome. Yeah. They will tell you how much you screw things up. So let's see if it works inside of review while we're doing. I think that's what it was popping up, right? Yeah. In that one box, but will it work here? If I think that the, the, See, I'm trying to mess up, see if Grammarly pops up, but there's no G logo. I get my spell check, right? This is the normal spell check that lives inside of review. If you didn't know that exists, you can also go over here to edit PDF content. And where is it? Oh, right here. Edit, check spelling. Ta-da. Um, so there is a spell checker here, but Grammarly does not work with that. But Grammarly did pop up when I did the other box, which was kind of yeah. I wonder if it's the window. Could be. From the window it populated open. Could be. All right. So if we're drawing lines for our signatures, uh, let's do this the right way. Typewriter, name, right? And then we'll do line. How do we draw a straight line? You can either follow it down this little lock here, or you can hold down shift. And shift will hold your little ortho line in place. And then we can go up here. It's trying to lock again. I'm going to hold down control, bypass any sort of snap operation. And there we go. Now I've got one. I can go and manipulate this. And then what Michael is wanting me to show you is if I select both of these. What's the trick to that again? Control. Control? Or shift. Sorry, yeah. shift. Shift will allow you to select multiple. Copy, paste. Do, do, do. Copy, paste. Do, do, do. I'd and probably I'm... group them so that you, when you do the align, 
I guess unless you're just aligning the lines. Yeah. But yeah. Grouping in would have been smarter. But it's see how it's got that little red dash line that's trying to automatically align them. I'm trying to deviate that a little bit. There we go. Because what I want this to do is align all my names, right? So if you shift, select both things, right click, there is an alignment option here. And I can align left. I didn't do what I wanted to. Control Z. Undo. Well, we're going to learn all of these right now. So, right. Align. Oh, interesting. When I had the name selected, it's because it's text. It's only objects? Mm hmm. No. Oh, wait. Hold up. Is it because you already did it? Control Z. I did. Oh, it has to be a grouping. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's try this again. I'll go to my select button, grab all these guys, right click, and align left. Well, hold on. Let's do distribute oh. horizontally. I'm going to do it best way. Okay. Beth says do it with names first, then lines. Let's find out. Okay. Um, do, do, do. Select my names. Okay. Alignment. Align left. Okay. Okay. I'm all right with that. Now, since they're all selected, I'm just going to move them. Well, use the distribute horizontally because I because that'll oh. oh what'd that move okay distribute horizontally yeah oh shift my other shift button distribute horizontally that didn't really do much mm -mm. what about vertically distribute I think this goes to the whole page right there you go so now yeah. those are even but they're not even, right? Or is well, that just my imagination? Left to right, they're not, but they should have with the vertical. But maybe the lines aren't the same, but they are the same because you copied them. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Align first, then distribute. Well, isn't that what I did? Again. Let's see. Alignment. Left. Okay. Distribute these guys vertically. There we go. See that? So it knows the limits of the top and the bottom, and it kind of splits the difference. So we'll it's do like the same. equidistance in Revit. Whoa. Big word followed by the R word. Oh, I don't know about this. Um, align left. There we go. And then distribute vertically. It didn't move very much, but there. Now it's our stamp, right? Um, that's okay, because we're going to use this one to go back into our blend modes. Chris, on YouTube, we will show you how to do a signature after he gets the stamp done, because he's got to put in some signature fields. So, Chris, what are you doing on YouTube and not on Zoom land? This is confusing me. Uh, sign here, please. All right. So we're going to put this here. We're going to end up signing this thing. Uh, but first, we're going to make a stamp out of it, and then we're going to mess with the blend modes. So we wouldn't want to go through and add signature fields in here. Right, Jason? Correct. Wait, what would happen why? if we did that? <laughs> I was just wondering why you're giving me that look. Um, because how would you click into it to get to it? Yeah. Because this fair. is seen as a PDF, right? That's all this is. It's a PDF yeah. file. You can use any PDF as a stamp, right? Yep. Um, we're just sort of messing with things. Um, now, in my stamp here that I'm working on, it's called signature block, subject, project, blah, blah, blah. I can adjust my... Whoa, look at this. I was I'm hoping assuming it has to be a right value, right? Yeah. I yeah. thought it was going to give me a drop down. It did not. Hmm. All right. So in here, I'm going to save this thing. And then we'll drop that. By default, when you create a new one, it's going to go live in that folder wherever you have that located, right? So remember down here, change stamp folder, that signature block is going to live in here under 
my English ones somewhere. It, um, no, it lives, it lives back in that stamp folder. So if oh, you go back, was, yeah, the I overall my, stamp yeah. folder, it just lives in the bottom of that. Oh, uh, wherever. It just lives in the bottom of that stamp folder is all. Signature block. There we go. And then we drop it in. All right. So in here, um, everybody should live in a van down by the river. <laughs> That's You're going to make Jason go down and score a hole with that. Right. So. Um, totally. So with this, I can go to signatures now and sign this thing. Uh, I don't know if so this that, is going to work. That was so. the question from Chris on YouTube. What is the best way to get a signature in review? So the best way is to create a signature field. Mm -hmm. Unless you're talking about your wet signature, I'm maybe assuming that one too. So either or, I guess, get some clarification from that DJ CJ. Let us know. Yeah. When we sign a document, two things are going to happen. <clears throat> the first thing, Look, remember our little status bar, select region to place a signature field, right? So you have to go pick your size. This makes things tricky if you're trying to get multiple people to sign this block so they're the same size, right? If I let go now, it created a form field, and now it's popping up asking for my digital signature, right? I've got my different tests here. Which password will I actually remember? Oh, that's a. I'm typing in the chat asking him because <laughs> I realized it was just going to go to DJ CJ. She's not going to say anything in YouTube. So is it a wet signature you're looking for, Chris? Like um, mm -hmm. an actual signed one or the one that's a digital ID like this? Right. So you can create a digital ID. Right, And this will give you the ability to make that digital signature or a document certification. Notice there's differences here. If you do a document certification, you can say no changes allowed. This sometimes will still allow changes. I've seen it happen. I don't have an answer for it. This time we're just going to do digital signature. Reason, blah, 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 blah. I am the author. I am approving. Um, I am. Uh, sure whatever the reason, location. It, that reason is showing because it's populating in there did this is blue beams digital signature id and you can change that is are you going to show them that because that's what chris was asking the digital id uh this this appearance how you can make different oh, yeah. appearances yeah so if you go here so here's your your preview Right, it's gonna gonna have my name on it, digitally signed by, time, date, location, whatever. Yeah, that's default, right? If you edit this, you can change a whole bunch of things. Graphic, none, right? I can, or I can go to a file. I can go grab my a, a scan of my wet signature, or if I did it with a stylus or whatever, I can yeah. add that in. I can add that picture of Grogu. I can add my company logo. I can do whatever I want to this. Um, yes, you should always use a PNG because that will support the transparency um, if you do a signature. Hmm. I'm going to do none here for graphic. Um, so if you're doing one. a wet signature, you're going to go file, go grab that file, and you're suggesting a PNG because of transparency. Correct. Okay. So that's what you would do, Chris. And then you can do alignments. You can change your logo, right? It's going to drop in the Bluebeam logo, auto, font size, whatever. You can force these to be the same size. Um, you can do all types of different things in here. Do you have a wet signature that you can show? I don't. Well, just go to a picture then of ATG, the image of our logo, so we can show them at least. Yeah. And then get That's everything a, off. It's not a PNG, there. but... Um, yeah. Yeah, I can. We'll just pretend that that's my logo, or my signature, right? And you can remove the labels and all mm -hmm. the stuff that they have there, so nothing is there. Yep. If you wanted to, you could totally just do your logo as a signature. Yeah, and that would be your wet seal there. That's what that would look like. Yep. Exactly. So you can have all this ready to go. Hit OK. Now, 
notice you can have multiples, right? So maybe you have one for wet seal, you have one for digital, you have one for collaboration, you have one for whatever. I'd probably just create one ID with multiple appearances. Yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Same, same, same. Um, <laughs> I'll hit okay here. It's going to ask me to save a copy of this, right? Signed junk. And there we go. My signature is in this. Signature is valid, right? This is what we talked about a little bit last week. That signature is valid. Once broke, I start, right? Yeah. Yeah. If I go to here, signatures, see that little green logo? Signature is valid, right? If I go sign this again, will it let me? I think it, no, I think signing's fine. I think we marked it up, right? right. And then it said invalid. Oh, see it turned uh, yellow now. It turned yellow. Oh, no. Yeah. So if I sign this again, eh, that's not what I want to do. So what happens uh, if someone, if there needs to be multiple signatures? Um, yeah, uh, it would invalidate whoever signed it before. Wouldn't it? But it shouldn't do that. Save it. Oh, they're what both it, good. So it's okay. saving a copy, saving a copy. Wait. Let's see. Oh, icon's a little different. Yeah, what does it say? Root certificate. Huh. Hmm. See that? All right. Oh, hit the drop down. Is there a drop down? Valid. Valid. It is valid. Oh, document has me. been updated since signed. Mm. Mm. Authority? I wonder if it's because it, it was me. Respect my authority. Mm. Self signed cert. All right. But now if I go manipulate this thing, right? Let's go put. Now look what happened. They're now yellow. Not yet verified. Not yet verified. This prevents somebody from making changes, right? If you're filling out a contract and it's got dollar symbols in there and someone goes and changes a thousand to a million and you've got a signature on it, be careful. So go right. back. See, it had to go back to the drop down. Sorry. This drop down? Ooh. Yeah. Go, no, the top one. Click to view this version. Where do you see this? Right below authority. Oh, revision one. Signed mm -hmm. by, whoa. That's different. It's that was not before the markup and the, the additional signature. Go back to that page. Yeah, right there. Nope. Oh, I know. Look at that. Hmm. It kept the revision history within the signature. I've never seen this before. That's new, new. See, that's, see, MCR, this is why we love it. Stamps, <laughs> we've covered it before. It's a fairly easy topic, but guess what? We're getting into the weeds. We're learning stuff that we didn't know before, and I hope that you did too. I don't think Michael watches enough South Park. I don't think I watch enough South Park. I yeah, I haven't watched been a while. South Park in a while, but yeah. that always stuck in my head. How you see authority? A real long time. Um, that should be our homework this week. We should... Okay, let's never do homework. All right. Um, yeah, so we inserted the stamp. We signed it. It will allow multiple signatures from the same person. I don't know if it's going to allow multiples. I could send this to you. You could try it. We got things, but we're, we also want to get to our blend modes. Yeah, that's important for sure. Because so, this always comes up and I always forget. Oh, me too. So when you have a stamp, 
you're going to be asked for a blend mode, right? So let me go back to where this was. Stamp, create Just, stamp. It's going to ask for blend mode. What is all this stuff? You don't have to decide here. It can be changed after the fact, right? So I've already messed with this file. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to get rid of this one. We're going to go back to some other file. Let's go to my good old, I watched um, Spider-Man No Way Home, Far From Home last night. Number six? Sure. But they were in the Sanctum Sanctorum. So this is where we're going to be today. And I'm going to insert a stamp. Let's just drop in my good old seal that we we're talking about. Let's do the approved. I like the approved. Yeah, because then we can see over, put it over something because we're going to use the different blend modes and it's going to, yeah, it's going to do things. There we go. Oh, let's, let's, there we go. Oh, this yeah. hurts my feelings to do, but this is for a reason. All right. So I've got a stamp approved. It's over some text. This is going to be important, right? Now with this same stamp selected, I still have my dynamic bar up at the top and I have my blend mode, right? Yes, this is sloppy stamping. This is why we're using blend modes. I'm a normal here. If I go to multiply, nothing really happens. Uh, well, no, it's a little transparent. Go back. Normal. Oh, it is. Yeah, there you go. I just got my eyes checked not too long ago. Let's go. My Let's, eyes are bad, so. There we go. If actually, this is kind of gray. Right, so so look at this text right here. I'm gonna change from normal to multiply. Boom. Now it's got a little bit of a. It's like a screen. It's like yeah. a little transparent. Oh, screen. Let's go here. If you go to screen, look at this. You can see it's still there, right? But it's the hierarchy of where it is. It's like a watermark. David, you're ahead of my words today. And I appreciate <laughs> the assistance. Um, Anthony, we'll get to your question. You can use tags. Is that what those are called? Or flags. Sorry. Flags. To jump flags. to spots. Yeah. Like Overlay. DocuSign. We won't say that word here. Oh, we'll, we'll say it. We don't like it. But um, we use it here, though, too. The no, we word. stopped. Did we? Mm hmm. Okay. Overlay. Darken. Whoa. What did that do? Lighten. Ooh. It's kind of like screen. Color dodge. Color dodge, burn. You dodge. Hard so, light. Hey, that's not a very hard light, but that actually looks pretty good. But notice how it's kind of layering itself above this and under this. Yeah. Soft light. light. Splits the difference. Exclusion. And I think last time we went through and somebody was kind enough to pull up all the definitions of all this stuff and it doesn't really matter. Um, but it's pretty good. There was one that oh, I'll wait. Almost done. Saturation and the last one. Color. It's so kind of can, we, can we do a, a red one, please? Markup. A red markup or a red stamp? Red stamp. So same maybe approved, but it's red. The color is red. Change from black to red. So it wasn't black, remember? What wasn't black? Mm, maybe you can't change it. It's that other black. There we go. So you can use this. I think it's the one of these. Yeah, so maybe it's only doing it on that one, though. Oh, burn. It was one of these that, yeah. So basically you're able to go through and yeah, that one, there we go. So see how you can change the colors. So if you made something like a black square, you can go through and make this, whatever area you want to have a red colorization to the PDF. Mm. So does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if you, yes, if you it, wanted that text to be red, right? On the it PDF. makes sense, but why would I do it? That seems like a lot of work. Hey, 
I saw a PDF that had that people were asking how they accomplished it. Someone else had it that cause they had like a detail and they wanted a specific part of the detail to be read, right. To like indicate something of change that needs to be updated. And the way to accomplish that would be something like this, right. That you could create a stamp, you could create a oh. rectangle. Then that rectangle would be highlighting and creating that portion only to be read. Yep. Does that make sense, everybody? I can do it real quick. Just this would be red. There's your grammar lady in. That's really weird why it shows up here. See, the grammar not working. Hmm. Um, red highlighter, blend mode. That was color dodge, color burn, lighten. Lighten. I mean. Any of those, the one let's do light, and yeah. Font color, line color, new stamp. And we're just going to drop on a whole big old rectangle with a that's, fill that's going to be filled red. Done. Save it. Save it. Now I can go here, drop in my stamp for red highlighter right behind this guy. See that? with that blend mode it makes that stand out mm -hmm. without using highlighter or Thanks, without, Beth. without doing other things right so there's other tricks to do that um I, I, i've never noticed this this is pretty cool i right clicked on a piece of text and i said search gray school i've never seen that either so i know you can do that in in like opera or chrome or whatever you can highlight a word highlight a word and it will do it i'm not even highlighting right click and it's using that ocr it's pulling up i can search whatever this means mm -hmm. so and question Ooh, sorry when it searches the whole document hmm. i didn't know if it was going to search this or pull up the web tab so there was a question from anthony if the ocr is right i guess i guess mm -hmm. well or if it's vector data which is optical character. You don't need OCR unless it's a uh, raster PDF. But so back to Anthony's question, have you talked about doing professional stamps in Bluebeam before? Any recommendations on a workflow slash process? Mm -hmm. We are looking at digital signatures with stamps, but not sure if Bluebeam can do this or if we should use another program. So big fat disclaimer here. Not every state or jurisdiction will accept a digital stamp. So make sure, blah, 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 you know where I'm seeing, where I'm going with that. Otherwise, yes, you can, and a lot of people do, use their stamp, right? They bring in their state of whatever. Um, that one got a little messed up. It got messed up years hmm. ago. I really need to reset this. Um, because I've tried editing this before and it won't go back to normal. You'll be fine when Mega Ultra comes out because it's a different folder. This is true. So now if I have my stamp, again, stamps have to have a certain size, right? If we're or replicating that wet signature, I forget what the diameter is, you create that stamp properly. Yep. You don't scale like Jason just did because yep. you're going to get... You'd left click once. And it would show up the size it was supposed to be. Right? So you, once you did that, I mean, technically you could have this, and I've seen this before. I don't agree with it, but it does get the job done. When they created the stamp, they already put their signature in there. I don't like right? that. So it looks like a wet signature. You can have the different colors. It can be ready to go. It's not actually taking advantage of the digital signature functionality in review that's going to prevent or at least alert you of changes. Yep. All right. So that's what we talked about a little bit ago. Once I sign this document, it's not going to ask me to sign in again, or actually, it will actually because of a different file. Oh, boys and girls, I got my password right on the first try. Today's going to be a good day. Mine's a um, four my number password. I don't know why you're such a long. Uh, All right. I'm used to it. 
Um, do, 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 do. And I want to sign this. Save it again. Uh, no. Desktop. Erase me. Hey, come here. Erase me. I need to start naming things like that. It's, uh, it's helped with my desktop cleanliness. So there we go. Now it's signed. Now, as far as DocuSign, DocuSign is pretty cool. I ain't going to lie. What's nice about DocuSign is it jumps you to the next place you have to sign, right? So if I go to a different place, I could do a flag and I can create the flag and sign here, right? And then I can go over here and I'll say sign here next, right? So a similar type of thing. So, DocuSign. yeah, but this would jump you to those areas that he's showing. If you wanted to batch, sign, and seal a document, same location, same stamp, and a digital signature, you would do this with batch, sign, and seal, which currently is only an extreme. Correct. And let, let me look at Super Mega Ultra. Currently batch, extreme. This would allow you to do that. But if you were sending this to somebody what i like about docu docusign it's pretty straightforward right it tells you what to do to sign and where to go and it jumps you if you're doing it in review all you got to do is tell somebody hey go to the flags right if they go to the flags and you click on them it will jump you right there right so it's not quite as intuitive but that's a pretty easy process. Does that make sense? They, all they put for mega ultras, they're all going to have add digital signature fields plus digital IDs. It doesn't say anything about batch. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. We'll find out in a couple of weeks. Um, to batch sign and seal all stamping staff. We're going to put that in notes all staffing stamping staff would need extreme then correct and that's what i often recommend what's nice about the different versions of review or whatever you've got the standard cat extreme not everybody needs extreme give yep. extreme to the admin staff who are working with forms give it to the stamping staff give it to the estimators everybody else can have standard let the revit designers have cad you know you can mix and match that way you can use enterprise for a whopping $10 a year and swap them around if you want to. But I highly recommend this signing staff have that batch functionality. Why? Because stamping stuff takes a long time mm -hmm. and let's stamp everything all at once. Let's just do multiple things at multiple pages and make our lives easier. Right now, super mega ultra, um, AKA review 21. And I'm glad that you're finally getting on my super mega ultra train here. Uh, Michael yeah. um, might have different functionality. Mm, depending on subscription. And yeah, we don't know what batch is going to be going into. So once we do, we'll let you know. They just don't list it. Um, we had a conversation about this during last week's MCR. So if you do want to have an off podcast um conversation feel free to uh just link up with your rep if you don't if you're not currently partnered with us um have a conversation with us one of the benefits is being able to talk to jason and myself um and schedule a call and have conversations about training about where bluebeam is going and what else jason and i'll say it again if you're not on review 20 with active maintenance Real, 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 real soon. You real soon. Get some. It's not too late to upgrade. It's not too late to add maintenance. Talk to your rep. If you don't have a rep, if you went direct to Bluebeam to buy your Bluebeam review software, that's okay. You can still go to ATG or your vendor of choice. I don't know why you'd choose somebody else, but you have <laughs> that freedom. You have that freedom. Yes, um, you do. Go to ATG. And you can still attend here if you yeah. did. Yeah. We're still here. 
there's people from not in the United States that I know are not our customers and they're here today. And I say, thank you for coming. Welcome. And uh, I also noticed that, Hey, there is a misspelling on this page. So there's that. Yep. It didn't pop up. Um, so with that, we got about five minutes left. We did our DocuSign fake sort of workflow, right? We can do this type of thing. You could also just put a note in here, open flags, you know, and it would work. Um, so yeah, thank you from England, Vince. Ooh, good question. Across the Chris. pond is what they say. Across the pond. Um, I, I really want to visit there someday. I do. Um, not just for my love of fish and chips, but um, <laughs> just beautiful people and scenery and all that stuff. History. I'm into it. Anyway. When um, Super Mega Ultra comes out, you can point to the stamp folder wherever you want it to be. So I'd save your stamps out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or put them on a PDF because you can always copy them in because they're seen as PDFs. Exactly. All right. Since we got a couple minutes left and I noticed this misspelling here and I cannot let it go. And uh, of course, David, I owe you yet another high five at XCon in August. Um, this is a good opportunity to show you how to fix this, right? This is a PDF file. I don't have the original. I have no idea where it is, right? Actually, yeah, I don't know where this is. Ooh, Revit? <laughs> yeah, I am not opening up Revit. Um, so this word is misspelled. What can I do about it? Is this the only word that's misspelled? Edit, check spelling. Check spelling in markups and form fields or check spelling in PDF content. If this is a vector-based PDF that uses a true type font, this will work. Squiggly markup, put red. Put suggestions in the comment. Yeah, let's do that. Let's just do this page. Let's make it quick. I'll hit okay. Oh, it didn't find it. You're kidding me. Go to your markups list. Oh, it didn't make the squiggly though. Mm -mm. Why didn't it make the squiggly? I like squigglies. It found, oh. It found this one for firm name. Um, firm go to firm. edit text and see if it lets you edit that text. See if it didn't pick it up. Do, do, do. Wait. Yep. Oh. It's because he saved it. Let's go back. Let's go back. We're on page nine. That's okay. We can go find it. Let's try this again. Manufacturers is what we're after. If I right click, it found it. Remember, we found that tip. Is that an actual word? Manufacturer, I believe it's missing a letter. Or is, it's one of those words where the more you look at it, the more you start to doubt yourself. I can't be the only one that it happens to. Um, check spelling in PDF content. Like a restaurateur. Um, Vince, I probably need the proper English spelling. Mm. This is correct. Mm. I will Google it right now. Okay, then. Let's say it is right, and I'm going to go change it anyway to make it wrong. PDF content, edit text. Manufacturers. Yeah, there's a, or there was a missing R. There is an R. Thanks, yeah. Andy. should be men yeah there we go so we fixed it even though it didn't pop up it was in the library for some reason so be it but now it's better and now i could sleep at night no i can't all right well we have a minute what happens at the end jason when you exit this if you are on zoom you're going to get a little pop-up saying hey how do we do all this other stuff give us some feedback give us some ideas for future classes Put in there, whatever. Say, hey, in a couple of weeks, can you guys talk about this? Sure. We look at all that stuff. Um, if you got a great idea or something cool you want to share, let us know. We'll bring you on. Um, if you want to whatever, um, you know, 
help us figure out what, how we're all going to party together in August for XCon. Bluebeamextreme.com. Check it out. Get registered yep. early. Um, we're going to have a good time. We're all going to learn from each other. It's going to be a beautiful in-person event in San Diego. Um, Doug, that's a given. And uh, I won't repeat that on air, but thank you for joining us, everybody. We see you next Tuesday. Be safe out there and take care. Take care. Have fun on your vacation, DJ, CJ. I'll email you, Anthony. <laughs>